Today we're going to look at three different divisibility rules for the unluckiest number, that is the number 13. And of course, nowadays you can simply use a calculator or a computer to determine quickly if one number is divisible by another. So along with doing some examples, we'll look at why these divisibility rules work because I think that's really the interesting thing here is to look under the hood. Okay, so let's look at our rules. So a number is divisible by 13 if and only if the right to left alternating sum of blocks of three digits is divisible by 13. So observe that this one looks fairly similar or at least related to the divisibility by 11 rule where you just take the alternating sum of digits. So here you take an alternating sum, but it's not just of a single digits, it's of blocks of three digits. And well, you're required to start at the right. Okay, so next up we have the result made from removing the last digit multiplying it by four, and then adding it to whatever remains, that has to be divisible by 13, and then the original number is divisible by 13. So that one seems kind of crazy, but we'll see how it works and why it works. And then finally, we've got another one, which is similarly crazy to this middle one. So the result from removing the last two digits, and then subtracting these two digits from four times the remaining digits. So if that's divisible by 13, then our original number is divisible by 13. So let's see that, let's say that you were really using this to decide if something was divisible by 13 and you had a very large number. Well, observe that this first rule applied a couple of times, probably just once, unless there are chunks of three zeros in a row, will generally net you with a three-digit or a four-digit number. But for a three-digit or a four-digit number, this rule is not super useful, so you could use one of these two rules. Okay, so let's get to our examples. Let's first decide if this number 4,219,358 is divisible by 13. So let's see. We're going to start with our alternating sum trick. And so the alternating sum of blocks of three digits going from right to left. So here we'll take 358 minus 219 plus 4. So we ran out of digits there. So, well, we could think about that as just 004 if you want. And in fact, if you pad this out, with zeros on the left so that you have um, a multiple of three number of digits, then you can go right to left or left to right. But this setup where you're going right to left doesn't require you to pad this out with zeros. Okay, so anyway, if you add these up, you'll get the number 143. And of course, you could probably quickly decide if 143 is divisible by 13. But that being said, I think this is a good opportunity to use our second rule. So our second rule to, to, says to take this number, remove the last digit, multiply it by four, and add it to what remains. So that means we're gonna have 14 plus four times three. So that's what we mean by this process. So let's see, that's going to be 14 plus 12, which is equal to 26. But observe that 26 is 2 times 13. So what does this tell us? This tells us, yes, our original number is divisible by 13. Okay, so let's do another one. So let's maybe do this number 5,923. So this is our second example. And here maybe we'll start with the third rule. So we're going to remove the last two digits and subtract them from four times the remaining digit. So let's see, what does that mean? We're going to take four times 59 and we're going to subtract 23. Because if you remove 23, well, what remains is 59. 
So if you do that calculation, which is pretty straightforward, you get the number 213. But now let's use this second rule again because, well, just for practice. So let's see, what does that tell us to do? That tells us to remove this last digit, multiply it by four and add it to what remains. So we have 21 plus four times, well, it's times three again. So let's see, that's gonna give us 21 plus 12, which is 33. But observe that 33 is not a multiple of 13. So the answer here is no. Our original number is not a multiple of 13. Okay, so now that we've done some examples, let's see why this works. So now we're gonna look at the why of this working. So we'll start with our first rule. So I'll just call that rule number one. And then after that, we'll just move through them one at a time. And so we're gonna use the machinery of modular arithmetic here, but that's pretty standard for proving these kind of divisibility rules. So let's start with the following observation. And that is if we take 73 times 13, sorry, that should be 77 times 13, we get the number 1001. But what does that tell us? Well, that tells us that 1001 is congruent to zero mod 13. Remember, being congruent to zero mod 13 is the same thing as being divisible by 13, but this multiplication problem right here says that it's divisible by 13. But now we can subtract one from both sides and we'll have 1,000 is congruent to negative one mod 13. Okay, but then let's like very sort of obviously observe that 1,000 is the same thing as 10 cubed. Now we can raise both sides of this to the nth power and we'll get this nice equation which is super useful for proving this rule and that is 10 to the power 3n is congruent to minus 1 to the n modulo 13. And now what we'll do is show that a number is congruent to this alternating sum action mod 13. That means, well, they're divisible by 13 at exactly the same time. Okay, so let's take our number and write it in terms of its digits. So let's say its leftmost digit is a sub 3n, and then we have a 3n minus 1, a uh, 3n minus 2, all the way down, a 6, a 5, a 4, a 3, a 2, a 1. So that's our number. And I guess I should point out here that we'll pad these with zeros on the left as needed. So perhaps if we don't have a multiple of three number of digits, we'll just insert a zero here and perhaps a zero here also if we need to. Okay, good. But now let's observe that we can write this in the following way. So this is gonna be the three digit number, A3N, A3N minus one, A3N minus two times 10 to the three N. So that's just this number right here followed by three N zeros. And then, well, we're gonna have the next three digits times th two, 10 to the three N minus one all the way down here. We have this three digit number A6, A5, A4 times 10 to the six, and then plus this number A3, A2, A1 times 10 cubed. So maybe we're doing this like base 1000, if you will. But now we'll reduce this mod 13 using our observation right here. And notice here we get minus one to the N times this number A3N, A3N minus one, A3N minus two plus dot, 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 and then we have plus A6, A5, A4, and then minus A3, A2, A1. And this is not equality, this is congruence mod 13. So there we have it. We have an alternating sum of blocks of three digits, and well, we could start this at the right and be good, and 
you might be a little bit worried that we're off by a sign, but if we're checking for divisibility by 13, we want this to be congruent to zero, and multiplying by negative one will maintain this being congruent to zero mod 13. Okay, so there we go. We've sorted this rule number one. Now we're ready to look at rule number two. So now we're ready to look at rule number two. This rule over here about removing the rightmost digit, multiplying it by four and adding it to whatever remains. And here we're gonna use the following observation. So let's notice that if we take four times 10, we get 40, but 40 is equal to 39 plus one, but that means it's congruent to one mod 13 because 39 is a multiple of 13. But now we could write that in the language of modular inverses as 10 inverse is congruent to four modulo 13. Okay, great. And now, well, let's take our number n. So let's say our number n is the one that we want to decide if it's divisible by 13 or not. And let's notice that we can write this as 10 times a number a plus a number b, where a is bigger than or equal to zero, and then b is from the set between zero and nine. So b is like the ones digit, if you will. But now let's observe the following like fairly obvious fact, and that is n is congruent to zero mod 13, if and only if, four times n is congruent to zero mod 13. Well, that's because four and 13 are relatively prime. I think that's pretty clear. But now let's write n as this expansion of 10a plus b. So this is equivalent to four times 10a plus four times b congruent to zero mod 13. Oh, but look at this. 4 times 10 was 1 mod 13. So that means this bit right here, this 4 times 10, is simply 1. And that means that this thing reduces to a plus 4b uh, congruent to 0 mod 13. But look, that a plus 4b is exactly removing the rightmost digit and then multiplying it by four and adding it to whatever remains. And observe that if that's divisible by 13, then by our argument, our original number is divisible by 13. So that sorts out this second rule. Now let's look at the third. Okay, so this last rule that we're gonna prove is this one about removing the last two digits and subtracting them from four times the remaining digits. Okay, so this is gonna rely on the following observation, which is that minus 100 is congruent to four mod 13. Okay, well, I mean, this really is built off of the fact that 100 is congruent to negative four mod 13. In other words, it's congruent to nine mod 13. Well, and that's because 100 is equal to 91 plus nine. And look at that 91. That's gonna be like 13 times seven, I believe. So that makes 91 a multiple of 13, and thus 100 is nine more than a multiple of 13. Okay, so that's just rewriting this observation that we're using you know, to make sure that we know why it is true. Okay, so next up, let's take our number n, which we wanna determine if it's a multiple of 13 or not. And now let's write it as 100a plus b. And here we're gonna take b between zero and 99, and then a is anything bigger than or equal to zero. Okay, great. And now we're gonna do something similar to what we did in the last uh, rule. And that is n is divisible by 13. In other words, n is zero mod 13, if and only if, well, negative n is zero mod 13. So instead of multiplying by four here, we're just going to negate. 
So negative n is congruent to zero modulo 13. But now let's write negative n in this form right here. So we have this 100a plus b. So that's gonna be if and only if minus 100 times a minus b is congruent to zero mod 13. Oh, but check it out. Minus 100 is four mod 13 by our observation, which we checked over there. So this is if and only if four times a minus b is congruent to zero mod 13. But look, this four times a minus b, keeping in mind that a and b build our number in here, is exactly this process over here. Removing the last two digits, subtracting them from four times the remaining digits. Well, b is the last two digits, a is the remaining digits. And that's exactly what we do here. We subtract those two digits from the four times the remaining digits. Okay, so there we have it. Three rules for divisibility by the unluckiest number. So there are these kind of strange divisibility rules for all sorts of numbers. Maybe if you know any really super contrived ones, post them in the comments. And that's a good place to stop.